welcome students in our next session of science 2 and i am your science teacher lakshmikan bukde from bharatiya shikshan prasarak samstha ambazore today we will deal with our next session regarding with life processes in living organism part 2 in previous part we had discussed the two important things in which the first which we had discussed that is a part of respiration actually it is an aspect of respiration which we called as a energy generation in that we had discussed two important parts that is aerobic and anaerobic respiration and the second important portion which we had discussed that is a cell division in that we had learned about the meiosis and mitosis processes now today we will learn its a second part in that we deal with the study of reproduction reproduction it is the next life process in living organisms in this topic we will discuss about the reproduction in reproduction we will talk about its a definition then its a type that is a sexual and asexual reproduction then we are talking about the reproduction and its modern technology in that we will discuss about the new trends in the field of reproduction in which we will talk about the ivf technique which we call as a test tube baby then we will discuss about the surrogacy and lastly we will discuss about the sperm bank then next point that is reproductive health how reproductive health is important in living organism that we will discuss in this session and the last and but not the least that is a population explosion what can we do to control the population not only of our country but the population of world that we will discuss in this point which we call as a population explosion so one by one we will discuss these points in previous lectures we are talking about the different life processes like nutrition respiration excretion circulation control and coordination and as we learn that these processes they are very important to keep the living organisms alive now this reproduction though it is a essential process in case of living organisms or human beings it is not that much important or it is not important to keep the living organisms alive without respiration one can uh, remain alive on the earth surface now what is the importance of reproduction that it helps to maintain the continuity of the species of that organism okay now we will define the reproduction that the formation of new organism of some species by earlier existing organisms it is called as a reproduction so by reproduction process the organisms they can reproduce or they can produce the similar organisms okay this is one of the important characteristic of the living organism and most important thing it is one of the various reason which is responsible for the evolution process which we had discussed in the first chapter that is evolution and heredity now this reproduction process it is mainly divided into two portion that is sexual and asexual reproduction now this asexual and sexual reproductions they are differ by some means from each other and first of all we will discuss about the difference between asexual and sexual reproduction processes first of all the cells which are involved in asexual and sexual reproduction that in asexual reproduction the somatic cells are involved while in case of sexual reproduction the gametic or germ cells are involved roughly what you can say the morphological characters or which is just uh, seen by our naked eyes that type of characters they are associated or they divides or produced by means of asexual reproduction while the 
sexual characters are the uh, characters which are related to the genetics they are uh, <coughs> they involve the gametic or germ cells second important point that a sexual reproduction that is uniparental means it will require only one type of parent doesn't matter either it is a male or female in case of the sexual reproduction it is a biparental it will require two types of parents definitely one parent should be mother and another parent should be father now as we have discussed here in a sexual reproduction though it is uniparental there is no genetic variations means the progeny or next generation which we are getting is exactly similar to the previous generation or which we called as a parent but in case of sexual reproduction the genetic variation is the characteristic feature it contains one male and one female parents so definitely they will contribute the 50 50% characters and what we are getting that is a genetic variation in case of sexual reproduction now what about the rate of reproduction the rate of reproduction in case of asexual reproduction that is very faster but instead of that in sexual reproduction the rate of reproduction is slow but that is a gradual slowly the change we will observe the next point that is this asexual reproduction is done only via mitosis and sexual reproduction is undergo mitos via mitosis followed by meiotic division or meiosis process now when we are calling that the asexual reproduction it is followed by the mitotic division then in that case the chromosome numbers are maintained means if initially we will have two n number of chromosomes then throughout the process the chromosomal numbers they are retained and they will remain 2n as it is in case of sexual reproduction the chromosomal numbers are uh, reduced to half at the first stage which we called as n means when you will have 2n number of chromosomes initially before processing in sexual reproduction or meiosis first of all it will reduce to half and it will become n number of chromosome lastly we can say this asexual reproduction that will be occurred in lower or unicellular organism while this sexual reproduction occurs in higher or uh, multicellular animals so this is a difference between asexual and sexual reproduction now the question will be asked on asexual reproduction that what is the advantage and disadvantage of this asexual reproduction now what can we say what will be the advantage the advantage is that it is a faster one and what is a disadvantage that there is a no genetic recombination though there is no genetic recombination the progeny that will be identical okay so this is one one of the best advantage that did, uh, that is a faster one and disadvantage that we are not getting the genetic variation so one by one we will discuss about this asexual and sexual reproduction now we will discuss about the asexual reproduction in unicellular organism basically this asexual reproduction in unicellular organism it is divided into two main portions that is fission and budding but as we know this fusion process is divided into two main parts that is binary fusion and multiple fusion so in some books they had given the three different types that is a binary fusion multiple fusion and budding process so one by one we will discuss about this process now first of all we will discuss about the binary fusion the process of binary fusion in which the parent cell divides to form two similar daughter cells basically what we had learned in the uh, <coughs> earlier stage that the existing organism that will divide either mitotically or meiotically and it will give the similar 
progeny or daughter cells. Similarly here, the parent it divides and they will produce two similar daughter cells. It occurs in prokaryotes like bacteria, protists like amoeba, paramecium, and euglena and eukaryotic cell organelles like mitochondria and chloroplast. Actually binary fusion occurs either by mitosis or a mitosis process. Now as we have discussed depending upon the axis of fusion or division it is it has a different types. Suppose one example we will take that is in case of amoeba though it doesn't have a specific shape and size it don't have a similar portions after the division of the cell. In amoeba it divides in any plane due to lack of specific shape hence it is called as a simple binary fusion means after binary fusion we don't have similar parts okay. Now in case of this paramecium, if you observe in the diagram if you cut or if you divide the paramecium cell into two equal halves transversely so it will give you the two similar cells at the end which we called as a daughter cells and this is called as a transverse binary fusion similarly in case of euglena you just observe in the diagram in case of euglena you can divide the cell of euglena into two equal or similar halves by longitudinal section. So it is called as a longitudinal binary fusion. One thing you should keep in your mind that binary fusion is usually performed by living organism during favorable conditions that is availability of abundant food material. Means whatever the three um, types of binary fusion that is a simple binary fusion then transverse binary fusion and longitudinal binary fusion they occurs only in case of availability of abundant food material. If there is an unavailability uh, of abundant food material or we can say the conditions are unfavorable they will not perform this binary fusion. Now we will discuss about the next part which we call as a multiple fusion. Now multiple fusion it is a type of asexual reproduction in case of amoeba and other protists. In such case as we had discussed it will occur only in case of adverse condition or when the abundant food material is not available then amoeba stops the formation of pseudopodia. Pseudopodia it is nothing but the locomotory organ. So if there is an unavailability of food or you can say it is an adverse condition they have to consume their energy level. So they don't want to move here and there and that's why the pseudopodia uh, formation of pseudopodia is stopped then movement is stopped whenever there is a lack of food and adverse condition. Then the amoeba it will become round shape and form the protective covering around plasma membrane and such insisted amoeba or any other protist is called as a cyst. So we will observe this in the diagram. So <coughs> you can just observe that initially we will have a parental cell and in adverse condition it will form the cyst. It is nothing but the protective covering around the amoeba cell or protist cells. Many nuclei are formed by repeated nuclear division in the cyst. It is followed by cytoplasmic division and thus many amoebuli are formed. You just keep one thing in your mind the single nucleus it will divides and redivides inside the cyst and it will form the many nuclei. And this many nuclei or you can say it is an amoebuli which is a plural form of amoeba. They remain insisted till there was the adverse condition. Means whatever the amoebuli which are formed inside the cyst they are <coughs> remain as it is whenever the conditions are unfavorable. Once the conditions are favorable 
This cyst breaks open up on arrival of favorable conditions and many amoebulae are released on the earth surface. Okay. So, what we can say that this multiple fusion, it is occurred in unfavorable condition of the food material. Now, the next method which we will discuss that is the budding process. Actually, this budding process is occurred in a unicellular fungus like yeast and as we had discussed in the definition that this yeast cell it will produce the two daughter cells or two daughter nuclei by mitotic division. A small bulge appears on the surface of parent cell and this bulge is actually nothing but a bud. You can see in the figure that the parental cell it will form a small bulge which we can say a bud. One of the two daughter nuclei enters this bud and after sufficient growth the bud separates from the parent cell and start to live independently as a daughter is cell. So, as soon as there is a formation of two daughter nuclei, one of the nuclei it will enters into the bud and afterwards as we had discussed in process of um, mitosis there is one process which we call as a cytokinesis. Similarly, the cytoplasm it will divide into two cells that is the parental cells and the newly formed daughter cells and afterwards these two daughter cells and they divide uh, separates from each other and live independently as a daughter is so this is all about the budding and whatever we have discussed now that is a, a sexual reproduction in unicellular organisms in that we had seen the binary fusion then multiple fusion and budding process now in the next lecture we will discuss about the asexual reproduction in multicellular organisms.